there is an intensified effort to help global south countries put money into alternative energy rather than paying back IMF and World Bank debts and loans. And here to talk about this is Esteban Servat. He is the organizer of the Debt for Climate campaign. Esteban, thanks for joining us. First of all, tell us, I mean, the, the issue here is that northern sort of countries have exploited resources and contribute to most of the, the global climate change through emissions and that somehow therefore the southern countries should be owed some forgiveness. Do I have that about right? You have it right, David. You know, the global north has the greatest debt of all, which is the climate debt. The debt through colonization and enslavement of most of the world and the emissions that they have produced in the process of industrializing as countries, that they have a climate debt that they need to recognize. And the global south is victim of what is well known as a tool of colonialism that is called debt trap diplomacy, which is what you just described, the IMF, the World Bank, keeping these huge loans on the global south where the interest is so huge that we're never able to pay it back. And this is directly linked to the climate crisis. This is linked to the climate crisis because it's forcing the global south countries to keep expanding the fossil fuel industry just to be able to keep up paying the interest on these loans that are never able to pay back. Now in 2001, there was an example, I think, in Argentina, where the Argentinian government was saddled with incredible debts and loans that they were trying to sort of pay back. And it literally caused a political insurrection. People took the streets and things were restructured. And yet it sounds like those debts are coming back around for Argentina. Yeah, you know, I was there, I'm from Argentina, I was 16 years old, I was in the streets where we ousted the government and the austerity policies of the IMF. It was an example to the world, but 20 years later, we're back in an even worse situation. Uh, Right-wing President Macri borrowed a huge record loan of $44 billion from the IMF, the biggest in the institution history in the world. And now the new government, uh, a progressive government has legitimized that loan that was completely illegitimate, it was unconstitutional. Uh, The IMF broke its own statute to award it. And the government, instead of uh, of auditing it, is actually uh, legitimizing it and we're in the worst situation in decades, over 50% percent poverty. And the government is basically paying this loan by sacrificing the countryside, the communities with mega mining, with fracking, with offshore drilling, and the expanding fossil fuel industry that is one of the ways that they're able to pay back these loans. And the reason these loans were awarded in the first place was that Vaca Muerta, for example, would be one of the sources of, of dollars and fossil fuels to pay back. We hear arguments from conservatives um, that look, you know, if people agree to get a loan, if they agree to take on a debt, they should abide by those obligations, and therefore there should be no exceptions for these countries in the global south. What's the response to that? Well, in Argentina, we say that loans are owed back, debts are owed, but frauds are not. And the reality is that most of the loans of Argentina, Latin America, Africa, the global south are illegitimate, often awarded to dictators, awarded unconstitutionally. Like in the case of Argentina, it was completely illegitimate, breaking the IMF's own statute to actually help Macri win the re-election. Well, he luckily didn't, but it was under direct pressure from Trump to help his buddy win the re-election with his record loan. So all of these things need to be audited, but the power of the IMF and the financial power is so big that no government dares to even audit this debt. That's why we need to create a united front against debt like Thomas Sankara was calling for from Burkina Faso and for which he was assassinated 35 years ago. We need to build a global movement that can bring together the countries of the global south, the workers, the climate movements in order to build enough pressure and have some power of leverage against these powerful institutions that are ruling the world and leading us to destruction. You're joining us from Berlin, Germany, and one of those powerful institutions you refer to, the World Bank, it has its global summit coming up in October. What's the strategy in terms of bringing this to their attention and what's the reaction you've gotten so far? 
That's right. You know, we're building this global movement called Debt for Climate, connecting these dots and connecting how this debt trap colonialism and the climate crisis are connected. We started it this year. We had one global action during the G7 to bring visibility to this. And now the next mobilization will be starting during the summit of the World Bank and the IMF. And the goal is to keep mobilizing thousands of workers, uh, climate activists, uh, indigenous uh, movements to bring us together to connect social justice and climate justice and put pressure and build common sense, build um, uh, build a critical mass so that more and more of the public is talking about debt, is talking about, is questioning this debt and is calling for debt cancellation to enable a just transition. Debt consolidation, debt issues, loans are not very easy for a lot of members of the public to sort of understand, particularly when it involves governments and what they're intended for. Um, so what is it though that, that the public can do uh, right now to try to help your organization or to somehow you know, get on to this issue and, and join you in this fight? Well, we have a website, it's debtforclimate.org, and on social media, the handle is just at debtforclimate, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can write us at info at debtforclimate.org to join us. And we are mobilizing all over the world. Last, last time we mobilized in 24 countries, this time it will be more from the summit of the IMF and the World Bank all the way to COP. And depending on what country you are, what you can contribute is different. If you're in the US, there will be actions taking place in Washington DC, maybe elsewhere as well. And you're in a key place, the most important place in terms of voting power in the IMF and the World Bank, which is the US and the hardest place to make these changes. So we need all of you and any people that can mobilize or help bring other groups, labor movements and so on, get in touch because we need to come together. How aware is the IMF and the World Bank of, of these issues and, and what's been their reaction so far? Well, the IMF and the World Bank are always coming up with greenwashing mechanisms and they have come up with the debt for climate swap that is usually a way that is supposedly canceling debt in order to take climate action, but it really isn't. When you look at the details, it's all about benefiting the global North corporations, continuing colonialism, and just decorate, decorative stuff, ornamental, not real change, and definitely not at the scale that is needed in order to actually, you know, to give you an example of what Debt for Climate is really calling for is the Global South has trillions of dollars of debt to the Global North, and also trillions of dollars of fossil fuels in the ground, many of the hundreds of carbon bombs, climate bombs like Vaca Muerta are in the global south and they're being exploited so that this debt can be paid back. So if we could allow to cancel this, the global south debt, trillions of dollars of fossil fuels could be kept in the ground by enabling the financing of a just transition. So in other words, merely by accelerating um, the uh, concerns about uh, greenhouse gases and taking steps to try to control climate change and to use renewable energies, just doing that in a sense could conceivably make it easier on the global south and this entire issue. Well, the thing is that things are not getting any better and contrary to the Paris Agreement and all the commitments that governments such as Biden are signing, the reality is that the fossil fuel industry keeps expanding, fracking and offshore drilling keep expanding and mostly, primarily the global south is the front line of that. So no real change will come until and unless we first cancel the debt and enable these countries to, to take away this political and financial stranglehold that keeps us ex ex uh, extracting primary goods to ship them to the consumption cycles of the global north for the last couple hundred years. You mentioned the Biden administration, how strong or weak are they in terms of advocating and supporting you on this? And who are the other uh, you know, countries around the globe that have leaders that are aware of this issue and are taking a stand? Well, definitely nothing good and nothing real is expecting from Biden. Uh, but maybe from the more progressive side in the US, some hope will come that these issues will be really taken up. Uh, we think that Biden is, is just one more of the corporate greenwashing uh, puppets in the US. Then elsewhere around the world, there is a very hopeful development with the election of Gustavo Petro in Colombia, who is already from the first inaugural speech taken up the demands of Death for Climate and is a likely champion of these ideas. And we're hoping that more and more voices will come up and take these ideas into the mainstream and uh, call for debt cancellation because it's the, it's the low hanging fruit for climate action. We could, uh, we could achieve the biggest victory to date in the climate movement, in the climate action that we need. And also it's 
is a no-brainer. We are headed into a debt crisis that is starting in the global south. And the first thing that needs to happen is to cancel these debts that are illegitimate, that are a knee on the neck of our countries to benefit the whole of the world by, uh, by leaving trillions of dollars of fossil fuels in the ground. And who are your most uh, highest profile advocates in the global south for all of this? Well, you know, this is a very young campaign that started this year, and it's really started in a horizontal, uh, you know, grassroots level. So we are not really, it's not been in our interest to find stars, but actually build it from the bottom up and engage a lot of labor unions, climate, social movements, indigenous movements. And there's been some very visible faces like Georges Monbiot that have been very helpful in supporting us. But we are not desperately running after famous figures yet. We know that the time will come and they will come by themselves. We just need to keep doing our work. And just to clarify one thing, I think the statistic is something like 71% of all of the global climate emissions, greenhouse gases come from, was it like just 100 countries? Mostly in the global north? 100 multinational companies, if that's the, the paper that you're citing, yeah, multinational corporations, yeah. And most of the emissions historically have been done by the global north countries, you know. The global south accounts for about 8% of all historic emissions, and yet we are paying the the worst consequences of the results of this development. Are you an optimist on all of this? Yeah, well, the fact that I'm fighting makes me optimistic. As long as you're fighting, no fight is lost. Well, yeah, I guess you have to be an optimist to take on something like this. And there is a lot of reasons to be pessimistic, given the way that the global south has been treated by multinational corporations and by countless countries in the global north for decades. But nonetheless, Esteban Servat, um, he joins us from Berlin, Germany. He is the organizer of the Debt for Climate campaign. And Esteban, good luck to you. We'll be watching for you the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us and for supporting Debt for Climate. And one more time, the website. Yeah, it's debtforclimate.org and the social media is at debtforclimate, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Debtforclimate.org. Esteban Servat, thank you so much.